Lord. You look at life where the glass is always half full. I'm telling you, the only thing that separates the top 15 from the bottom 15 is how to look at the picture. Period. Period. I got the best sponsors in the world. I don't knock these people. On this one I colored out, I don't have them no more. And that's a fact. That's a sharpie marker right there. <laughs> you can get rid of me, I can get rid of you. I got some great sponsors. I believe in them. I believe I fish with the best product out there. But I believe the best weapon in bass fishing is how you look at the picture. How the man in the front of the boat handles himself at all times. Is he, does he get down too easy where he can't think to become a versatile fisherman? Just because I go fish an hour and I ain't caught one, you know what that means? Nothing. Means I got seven more hours to make up for it. As I fish along, I'll have more and more marshals come out and they'll watch and they'll say, do, do what I want. And they say, some of the stuff they didn't ever see, said, sometimes we thought y'all caught fish every cast. I said, what? What? I said, dude, I fish a week sometime and ain't caught 10 fish. I said, we don't catch as many fish as what you think. But what I've learned to do mentally is think that every cast is the next fish. I don't get down on the situation. But I work at that, so it's a positive mental attitude. If you think you can't get a girlfriend, you won't get one. I know the prom's coming up. Throw it out there. You tell her I got a positive mental attitude. I'll trade you out. It's been a good sport right there. So now that we understand it, we're going we're gonna to think positive, and we're going to make adjustments fishing. We don't make drastic adjustments. Y'all ever fish around somebody that's like, starts right here, and then meow, meow. Meow, meow. And the guy said, man, he must be on them. I said, yeah, hunting the bathroom or lost, because he ain't catching them. Guys that catch them, we cover a lot of water in practice, but I don't do that in the tournament. I make adjustments. I don't make stupid decisions, always. I have made some. Trust me, look at the results at Gunnersville last year. I caught three on the best lake in the world that I live on. Huh? Write that down in your book. They would have walked me down in the media room after I weighed in one in my hometown, and they said, Mr. Swindle, we'd like for you to come down in the media room, and the media would like to talk to you. <laughs> I said, really? They are interested in how I caught two pounds. So I had to prove to this young lady as I walked in the media room, I just screamed it out. Any of y'all care to know how I caught that one? Nobody said anything. I said, gotcha, honey, I'll be out of here. So I do make bad decisions. I try not to. I try to make simple decisions, quick adjustments, but don't overthink it. KISS. Anybody know what the KISS method is? Teacher? KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't overthink bass fishing. He cannot see what you are tying on. You think he can, but he can't. He can't see that you've got bright color socks on. He's a bass. Make real simple decisions and fish your bait thoroughly. I tell everyone, the key for me, and I tell myself this every cast, I tell myself, fish that cast. Anybody here ever been in such a bad mood or not catching them fast enough that you're just casting down the bank? And I've been this guy. I mean, you're throwing that jig over by that stump and you're doing it like this. Oh, God, there's a stump over there. And then you're over here on this side of the boat and you're like, oh, my God, look at them boat docks over there. Anybody here ever been that guy? Fish the cast. Fish the cast. If I had enough confidence in myself that I want to throw by that stump, I owe it to myself to fish the jig by that stump. I have been in such a hurry that the bait never got wet. Y'all ever been that? I've been that guy. Woo, yeah, here we go. Woo. About two hours later, my bait ain't even hit the water yet. It's just like all over the place. Make your decision, make your cast, and believe in it. Fish it long enough to give the fish a chance to tell you what's going on. It's presentation. I've been that way. Most of the time that comes, we have a saying in fishing called nervous feet. You ever fish down the bank with somebody and they're like this on the front of the boat? Kind of like I am up here, nervous feet. They're reaching for rod, they're looking around, they're looking around. Okay, he's lost. He'll be printed out with a sheet down there where it runs out of information. That's what he'll be that day. Fear the man who stands very calm and poised and fishes every cast. He's not second guessing his next move. Y'all with me? You ever get so flustered you started second guessing your next cast, you ain't even got this one in? I'm telling you to believe in every step. If your gut tells you to throw a spinnerbait and you pick it up, fish it like you're not ever going to fish it again. Because what you do then is you fish that bait with confidence and you get a strike that encourages more gut instinct, more confidence. 
Every time you pick a bait up and you kind of halfway fish it, you don't get a bite, just killed your confidence. Big difference in confidence and cocky. People believe that? Ask Alabama, Ohio State trimmed them right on up. They, could, they couldn't get look past Ohio, they was looking at them Oregon ducks. We're going to skin them ducks up. Huh, you didn't get there. Big difference in being confident and cocky. A confident bass fisherman understands his ability and what he can do in a bind. We re say fishing, and this is going to be a big parallel. You're going to say, this guy's reaching. A great fisherman is a great scrambler, much like a great scrambling quarterback. A lot of times, the first stop, when you drop back and you look for your receivers, at Toho, I'm about 199. There wasn't but 200 in there. I was ahead of one dude, one guy. And he had a bullet with about a 700 on there, and he passed me in the first three minutes. So then I'm about 200. Well, half the places I wanted to stop had somebody on them. So I'm immediately in the scrambling mode. I'm sitting in the pocket with nowhere to throw the football. That's when you find out how versatile you're going to be and how quick you can make something happen. Do you panic? and just start running crazy? Or do you say, I'm going to simply slow down, I'm going to pull in somewhere, and I'm going to catch me one. I'm going to get on the board. That's what we call fishing. When you get run out of the pocket, the game plan that you had or the fish that you were catching don't work, we want to work on your next move. Do you have enough confidence to lay all that stuff down and say, I'm going to try something different? Anybody here gets a few bites on Friday and go back and fish that way all day on Saturday and never get a bite? Sticking with what you know. You know what I mean? You stick, And that's... That's when people say, what do you think the difference in a local angler and a guy that travels around fishes? The guy that travels with fishes has the ultimate confidence to lay everything down on this side of the boat and pick up something new and go somewhere different. The difference is when he gets there, he's very comfortable. My theory is most practices, with the exception of the Delaware River, and I'll bring that back up, I'm going to get me four to ten bites a day anywhere I go. So why on tournament day should I feel like that's any different? Why? Just go fish. If all else fails, you got 10 bites yesterday and you didn't even know where you was at. So what makes you think on tournament day you are, you see what I'm saying, how simple it gets you? I know guys, it's like, well, I got four bites. I got to stay there all day. That's my best spot. You think that's the only place fish live in Toho? They fish all around you. Don't be scared to pick up something new and go somewhere new and fish it with confidence. You have to establish that. You establish that in practice. The challenge I have for you is when you're practicing and you establish a pattern or you get bites in an area, don't repeat that all day. Don't take a, a brown jig and flip on a shady side of stumps for the next 16 hours. Come in and say, well, I had 19 bites. I feel like I'm on them. You know the pattern works. Why didn't we look for a secondary pattern? Something that we can fall back on. So many guys will get bites and they'll practice that same way for three days. Do you know how hard it is to get weather conditions the same for four days, for five days, much less six and seven days? A lot of days in our tournaments, we'll practice Monday for Wednesday, Tuesday for Thursday. We're constantly practicing for what could happen, what could happen. And a lot of times I'm just looking. I may not even get bites, but I'm logging in my mind that over here some floating docks that had brim around them. If the water temperature keeps rising, there's a good chance I can come in this calm pocket and catch a fish. I didn't have a bite in there in a tournament. For instance, Toho this year, the first day I draw out, like I said, 200. You talking about a cat fight to catch some. Now, I come in with 15 pounds of Fletcher Shrock, which is a good friend of mine standing there. And he goes, gee, you smoked them, didn't you? And I'm like, <laughs> you have no idea. I caught me one flipping a trick worm to the lily pads, just random. I sacked that one up. I swapped lakes, locked down in the Lake Cypress, caught me one dragging a Carolina rig in about 18 foot of water, run back out of Cypress in the hatching all, seen some birds diving, run over and shut down, and they were breaking. Dug a jig out, a 3 8 ounce jig, jerked the weed guard out of it, threaded a swim bait up on there, and swing, got me number three. Never got another bite there. God's honest truth, I locked back up into Toho. I got me three. I said, I got to make something happen. I go running around there with two hours left. I catch me a five-pounder on a Zoom ultra vibe speed worm, just randomly reeling it through the grass, and I catch a three-pounder dead sticking it by a lily pad. So I come in and Fletcher said, dude, you smoked them. I'm like, yeah, I laid 
to them. You don't forget that. That's 15 pounds of chaos is what that was. The next morning I go back out. I had seen an area that I thought would be productive. I knew what the water conditions was. I knew I was boat number two and I could get there. I haven't seen nobody fishing it. I pulled it over the Carolina rig and I caught 20 pounds in an hour dragging a trick worm. I come in and Fletcher goes, good Lord, dude, you're on them. I said, if I told you how I caught them, it'd just make you mad and confuse you even more. I'm driving home. He said, you truly did just run down there and catch him on a Carolina rig. Yes, I did. The difference is I seen that and I believed in it. I didn't run there out of panic. I knew the scenario of the current and shale bars in Florida, what the capability of it is. When you make those decisions, you've got to believe in it. So I think the, the fishing throws you curves constantly, curve, curve. We just want to respond to those better. It doesn't have to be your game plan. You just got to catch five. Seems easy, don't it? I mean, I was at Big Bay to knock. It seemed like it was going to be easy, but good Lord, that's a lot of water for so few fish. You got it? You eat the Waffle House too? I got some dude wives now. Glad you come out. Enjoy the show. Tell everybody we say hello. We love them. These kids on the front is keeping us all occupied up here. So, any questions on that real quick? Like, we talked about versatility. I've got, you know, you guys have been real quiet. I had no questions. Of course, I didn't really give you time because I've been talking about this crazy stuff. Yes, sir.